What's up, YouTube? Got something a little different from y'all. Those of you that have been following knew this was coming. Um, we're going to do a little review on these mowers. So, I started to come outside and scrape decks and pressure wash and clean them up and have them looking real good for this video. Then I thought about it. No. No, we ain't cleaning them. These machines have been running for the last couple of weeks in horrible weather. I mean, just wet grass, wet conditions, heat. Just, I mean, just poor conditions. And they are filthy. But you know what? I ain't cleaning nothing. I am, just not before the video. I want y'all to see real world several things so i left them as is i'm not putting new pretty blades on them i'm not cleaning the decks i'll do all that afterwards we're going to show the real deal what it's like what these machines do how dirty they get uh just real world conditions so that being said Not sure how well y'all can see this, but 113.7 hours. And I got the 61 out here with the covers pulled, uncleaned. Not sure how well y'all can see this, but 130.5 hours. These machines have run a couple, I mean, two, three weeks. <laughs> They've only had the blower taken to them a couple times, which I haven't done that yet. So, that being said, we're going to talk about this Air FX deck first thing. Now, there is some clippings. You can see it is unclean, though. But, uh, there's no buildup. It just doesn't build up. Now, the decks will get dirty fairly quick, but the only deck I've seen that will compete is Skag's deck. The problem with it is, run one of them Skags in Tall Bahia for a couple of weeks without cleaning the deck. Pull them covers and see what it looks like. Honestly, you're probably going to smell it before you see it. Uh, these decks do not build up on top. It's not some crazy design. I honestly don't know how that happens, but they just don't get build up around the pulleys. They stay clean. It's, it's honestly kind of unbelievable. Uh, as far as the filters go, make sure I didn't hit no buttons. See right here, unclean filter. There's a little bit of dust. That pre-filter needs to be pulled, which I'm going to do that. It needs to be blown off, but... Here, let's see what the actual filter looks like. I mean, that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to blow that off and put it back to work. So, wet yards, no washing, no water hose. Literally, in a few weeks, they've only had a blower taken to them maybe twice. And it wasn't today. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a little happy about that. Now, next thing, while we're on the deck, I've got this 52 just kind of propped up on the trailer. I'm gonna show y'all under the deck. Keep in mind, wet grass for weeks. We've mowed in the rain more than once. Uh, the last week, it's been almost every day. Haven't touched the deck at all. So, here we go on this. 
Your guess is as good as mine because this is by far the worst conditions I've put them through yet. We're going to have a look under here together because I don't know what it looks like either. So, there's a little bit of buildup by the spindles. You can see that. I'm pretty sure you can see it right there. There's a little bit of buildup. Other than that, these decks are clean. Uh, right here in the front, you can see this. This baffle runs all the way across the front. You've got more baffles right here that you can loosen a few bolts and these slide up and down. We leave them all the way open because of how much bahia we cut any kind of weeds or anything like that, you open those baffles, see one, two, and three. And now the blades are actually lower than the front of the deck, which allows you a cleaner cut. It allows stuff like bahia stalks and other weeds to stand up before getting to the blades. Uh, see there, the 52 has one anti-scalp wheel mounted inside the deck. The 61, has them, has two of them. But these blades go in, this bolt goes all the way up here into the spindle. Uh, probably a three and a half, four inch bolt, but there's no bolt on top. It just, you just run it in right here, snug it up with the impact. Then there's a large washer that goes on top and a small flat washer at the bottom. Very easy to change out. These baffles are all made in individual pieces so that if there's any damage to the baffle, you pull that one piece and swap it out. You're not looking at replacing a deck or cutting or welding or anything like that. Uh, grease certs. The pulleys on these things, I'll show you a little better right here. The pulleys and all, the bearings are all sealed. So they're greaseless, no grease at all. But you do have grease certs in some places right there where the pivot points are for the deck, top and bottom. There's four grease certs. Then you have grease certs here for the bearings for the front wheels. And I believe that was it. If I remember correctly, it was just those six that were on there. Everything else is sealed. Which I, I'm used to a John Deere. Uh, I mean, the damn grease search got grease search. You gotta put grease everywhere. And you're constantly greasing them are you going to have issues uh these are guaranteed they're warranted if they tear up i'm sorry up underneath on that arm the pivot point for that arm you can see it right there there is another greaser it's seven total not six i forgot about that one which you can see it's a little dirty there was some grease on it I didn't forget about it when I was greasing the machine. I just forgot for the video. Uh, now, blades. This set of blades right here, we ran for well over a week. Keep in mind, we've got a lot of rocks. Uh, the last video we did, that field we maintained, that whole roadside was dug up this year they came back where there was dirt and replaced everything with pit which is a mixture of clay and gravel <laughs> and it's a lot it's a long section i mean it's a quarter mile down the road uh several feet wide you saw me trim part of it where it was steep to stop from rutting it up the rest of it look blades are blades before i go weed eating all that 
I'm going to sharpen my blades, buy new ones, whatever, but I'm going to cut. So, if you can see, these blades got chips in them. But here's the deal. That blade there ran for over a week. You can see there's chips in the blade. But, I mean, these things are thick. They are heavy. Coming from the last set of machines I was on <laughs> with factory blades and aftermarket blades, these things are ridiculous. Uh, durability, spindles, everybody that's been doing this for any amount of time has busted a spindle, been a blade. I don't care how good you are, eventually there's something you're not going to see, and it's going to happen. Uh, I don't know if you saw when I was underneath this mower, showing you underneath, that far side, the left side over there, there's a pretty good gash out of one of them baffles on there. Well, trying to get done, trying to hurry up. Around here, we got a lot of magnolia trees. The magnolia trees are dropping leaves right now, heavy. Um, on the side of a ditch, there was a magnolia tree right next to a big oak tree. I knew the root was there. I've seen it. I've grabbed the handle right up there. Right there grabbed the handle and floated the deck over this route more than once. It's covered in leaves. It's on the side of a ditch. I was hauling ass, jamming out to my music, trying to get done. And what happens? I hit this route that stuck up four or five inches at about 10 mile an hour. Wide open throttle, blades turning, the deck jumped, came back down, and the blade took a two inch chunk out of the root. Cut that some, cut it clean off. Now, more went to making all kinds of racket. I hurried up, shot it down, shut it down, looked under there, and it actually bent the baffle back just a hair so that the tip of the blade was catching it no damage to the spindle same spindle same baffle same blades i checked my blades the blades were not bent at all honestly there really wasn't no damage to the blade at all there was one little indention that when i sharpened it i dulled the front of the blade Put a nice new angle on it, blade was good to go. Now, I can go spend a little bit of money, replace that one little small baffle, and it's brand new. But, I uh, did a little redneck engineering and grabbed a wrench, nice size wrench, put it over the baffle, and I pulled. It straightened out. Good to go. Works like new. The crazy part to me is there was no damage to the spindle. You hit a stump or a root that big at 10, 10 and a half mile an hour, 11 miles an hour, wide open throttle, blades turning, and you hit it hard enough that it just flat out shuts the machine down, you broke something. My, uh, my John Deere's, I would have grenaded a spindle. I'd have been out there picking up pieces of shrapnel all over that yard. Nothing wrong with it. No slack, no nothing. Not showing any grease leaking out of it. Like I wiped it, cleaned it real good when I got home, ran it a little bit. Perfect. Uh, mind blown. Uh, 
I don't know what the hell they made them things out of, but they found the right material for sure. Um, now, this is the mower that we had the fueling issue. I brought it back. They went through the entire fuel system, top to bottom, front to back, everything, took it all apart, put it back together. More worked great. And put about 10, 15 hours on it. And it went to surgeon. I stopped, left the engine running, killed the blades. Me and the guy at the dealership had talked about it and we thought maybe it was something to do with the pickup line inside the tank. So I grabbed the machine, got off, grabbed the machine and I rocked it real hard. Side to side, all of a sudden it leveled out. Got video of it, all that, sent it to him. He's like, all right, that just tells me that we were right thinking about it, something to do with the pickup line. So he has ordered all the internals for the tank, at the, the tank, all of it. Well, since he went ahead and ordered that stuff, it ain't done it since. The parts should be there, ready to go. If it happens, bring it up there. He's swapping the whole thing out, complete assembly, done deal. Um, honestly, the cut on these things, the speed, everything about them has been amazing. I am in love with these machines. Baddest machine on the market. Now, see right here, here, and here, this is the one complaint I could possibly have with these machines. Just from sweat and being out in the weather, the finish is pretty much gone. Like you can see, that's surface rust. Really the only place on the machine other than the exhaust that has done that, which I understand the heat. Now, the 61 has done the same thing a little bit on hers, but nowhere near as bad. I sweat a lot, a lot. So, <laughs> I guess if I just washed them a little more often, we probably wouldn't have that problem. But where I'm sweating, where they're getting wet, where there's salt buildup, they uh, they have corroded a little bit. Uh, Y'all ask for pros and cons, there's a con. I really can't come up with anything else. I mean, they're comfortable, they're fast, for only 26 horsepower, they will pretty much go through anything. Uh, they won't quite keep pace with that big 7,000 with 38, 39 and a half horsepower. But they got 26 horsepower. Uh, it's a FT 730 V Kawasaki on them, and the way they've got them geared, they're mules. They they put in work. So that's pretty much my review on them. I have no complaints. Like I said, I've ran X Mark recent recently. I wanted to check them all out. I was trying to be unbiased. I came from John Deere. I ran Xmark. I ran Kubota. Skag. There was one other one. There was one other one I looked at. Anyway, those were the main ones. I was pretty much, you know, set on Skag. And then I went to check these out. And these things are the truth. Uh, unless somebody makes some drastic changes, Bobcat has my business and I will not be going anywhere. I will be strictly Bobcat with all my stuff. And that includes when we go get some big zero turns or some possible work coming up in the future so 
Any other questions I can answer, leave it in the comments. But if you like what you see, you want to see some more, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you next time.